Okay. So welcome everybody. To, welcome to Energy Play Shop number 58. Today is August the 10th, 2023. Um, the last couple of, actually last two months, pretty much um, most of the summer, I've been talking about Kundalini and um, the, the last two weeks I started to talk more about the central meridian. And I'm still exploring the Kundalini and Central Meridian this week, but um, from a slightly different angle, I actually want to talk more about um, levels of truth. Um, why? Because I think it's very important for us to access truth um, because there's so much misinformation out there and there's so much manipulation from every corner. So that's why when you start to focus on truth, really focus on accessing the truth that's within yourself, you actually become more authentic and also you become more powerful as well because um, once you 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 understand what what is true for you, where you stand in different um, in different um, what is most truthful for you, then it's actually much easier for you to sort through other people's information and and you would be able to build on from there. So. And Kundalini, uh, is, as we've talked about that, Kundalini and Central Meridian, um, for those who, of you who are new here, Kundalini is, um, I think most people know what that is. Kundalini is an energy, um, one of the major energy system that brings energy from Earth into our body. And the Central Meridian, um, which in... Like olden days, meaning maybe um, a couple thousand years ago, they used to be the same. The Kundalini and the Central Meridian are both um, same, like pretty much the same channel within our bodies. It's kind of in the middle of our body, and it's just running up and uh, like from top to bottom in within our body to bring in energy, also information, knowledge. Uh, and a whole lot of other things um, into our body, but as as our understanding of the of, of what is true starts to degrade as we get more and more um, out of integrity with who we truly are as a as the sentient beings, then the the Kundalini starts to um, become kind of more and more um, separate from the central meridian. And right now, the Kundalini is kind of running close to where our spine is. And like, you may not think that it's a, it's a very um, big difference between, because our body is, is not like several feet wide. It's, it's only usually about eight, eight inches, depend, depending on how, how much muscle you have. So at most, 12, 12 inches so if you only um, look at our cross section so that's that's kind of how um, how much space we have within our body however because it the information is so um, condensed that if even if it's just slightly off it starts to um, create a confusion between the central meridian, the, the information that the central meridian is bringing into our body and the, between that and the Kundalini. So that's why we become more and more confused and we become less and less potent as a creator. So that's why I've been talking about, especially last week, is, is to how to combine the Kundalini and the central meridian together. And so this week, I'm more specifically talking about um, the truth. How, um, there are levels of truth and also 
how we can start to access those levels of truth more within our body, within our own consciousness as well. So that is the topic for this evening. But before I go into that, I um, just want to welcome everybody and also to do a presence meditation. It's just going to take a few minutes, which will allow all of us to just be more mindful and be in this moment. So let's take a deep breath in. Just breathe in through your nose. Deep breath in. And just let it all go. Breathe out through your nose as well. Take in another deep breath through your nose. And breathe out. Every time you breathe in, imagine that you're breathing in pure love. And every time you breathe out, imagine that you are letting go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. And continue to breathe in and out according to your own rhythm with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for your body. Use your breath. Use this breath that is always with you to guide your body into a more relaxed and calm state. Every time you breathe out, wherever it is that you feel this tension in your body, just consciously set the intention that you want to release all of the stress from that part of your body. And really feel that part of your body starting to become softer, more relaxed. And when you feel yourself, starting to feel yourself being more relaxed, then set the next intention. The next intention is to call back all of your energies, all of your attention, to bring them all back to you. During the day, we give our attention away. We give our energy away to supposedly the world outside ourselves. In this moment, though, just be with yourself. Bring back all of your attention, all of your energies back to you. No need to think of anything that is in the past or anything that is going to happen in the future. Just be in this moment. In this moment. Be you. Put all your focus on yourself. And feel what it feels like to have all of your own energy back, all of your own attention back into your body. Feel what that feels like.
And when you feel that you're more solid, that you're more of yourself in this moment, then just take a deep breath in. Let it all go. And then you can open your eyes. And come all the way back into the room. Welcome back, everybody. So welcome back, everybody. So as I've mentioned, I'm going to talk more about um, levels of reality or levels of truth. They are kind of um, similar. Um, what is true is also what is real for us as well. And there are different levels. And um, I, why I want to talk about that is that I... Um, I've been taking, I've started a course, um, taking a seminar with um, Richard Bartlett. And Richard is an interesting guy. Let, let me just put it that way. <laughs> he is a very interesting person. Why? Because he has gotten, he's able to, well, let, let me describe a little bit about him first. Um, he is a chiropractor and after he went through a couple of years of ch chiropractic school and he was practicing for I think about maybe about 10 years and then he went back to um, get his second degree as a naturopathic doctor and and um, so he has two kind of two degrees but um what he is most, what I am studying with him has nothing to do with either of those degree. It's really to do with um, how to access quantum, quantum energy. Um, why do I want to, to talk about that is this, Quantum energy at the quantum level, we are we have access to all that is at the quantum level because everything is connected at the quantum level. It is only when we kind of zoom out and and we um, think that we are this body. When we think that the, we are this body, then we are disconnected. We this body has. Um, has a history, has a set of parents, has a set of experiences that separates us from all that is. When we can separate and um, this and not really distance, but be able to choose not to identify with our personality and be able to identify with whatever the identity that is most um, beneficial in order to do healing, in order to um, create a reality that we want to experience, when we can step in and out of different identities to be able to, to take advantage of that um, ability, we can actually make things happen that is that seems like miracles that seems um, miraculous. And, and so that's what I've been learning with him. And it's very, I would say it's very um, part of the reason why I'm interested to, to talk about the truth because I've mentioned, I think a couple of times before, uh, more than a couple of times before with, with all of you, is that um, there is, I, I think I can say that there is really no, no truth. There is, there is, um, why do I say that there is no truth is, for example, um, this body at the 3D level, 
what I can see, what I can touch, what I can hear, what I can smell. That's one level of real. That's one level of truth. However, um, what I can see, what, what, what my eyes can perceive is only a very small spectrum of the, um, of the color uh, of what is um, invisible. Um, and what I can hear with my ears is only a very small fraction of the um, sound waves that my body can perceive as a sound. For example, there are sounds that a dog can hear or a cat can hear that I cannot hear at all. And there are um, people who can see energy, which is subtle energy. And most other people cannot see it. Our eyes have not been, we have not trained our eyes to be able to pick up on those things. So that is, does that mean that those things, those those sounds that the, the our pets can hear, or those other um, people with extra senses can see. Does that mean that they are fake um, and they are they are crazy? Um, not really. It's only it's only because we cling on to what it is that we can access with our five senses that we think that what our five senses can access that is real and that is true and anything outside of that spectrum is by definition fake not true that there is actually so many other information that uh, so much other information that we don't pick up we don't and even if we pick up we may not pay attention to them because i have extra senses but I don't always pay attention to them. So it's our reality is make, made up of what it is that we pay attention to. So the first level of truth is really the 3D level or the level of our five senses. So that's the first level of the truth. But that's not the only level of truth. There are other things that um, that is also true as well and then there is a the second level of truth which is the information that is available for us that is beyond our five senses beyond 3d so that's above 3d and above our five senses that's another level of truth and um and those can include so many different things. Um, um, it's, I'm not going to give any examples for now. Um, so that's that's the second level of truth. Kind of. A, uh, and the second level of truth is really very, a, a very big range. It's above 4D, uh, above 3D. There is infinite number of dimensions, infinite number of um, layers of experiences that we can have. So the second level of truth is, is a big layer. And then there is one other level, which is kind of the ultimate level, which is the level of the um, universal truth. So something that is true, no matter what information you have access to no matter so that's the level of truth that is beyond space and time so when you can actually access um, your own past life and also you can also access future what's happening in the future being able to intuitively know something is coming something is happening in the future so when we go beyond the speed of um, light so that we can go and be able to look back 
and see the past, our uh, past life, see things that are in the past, and then also be able to look forward as well and be able to know what's coming in the future. We actually have access to so much more information. And that actually lets us create a reality that is so much more expanded than the one that we limit ourselves to when we are just using our five senses, when we are just um, being able to like um, in this one lifetime. So, and we are going to that. We are moving to that now. That's what the fifth dimension is about. And like fifth dimension and about. So that's what that is about. And the the ultimate um, truth is when we get to the part where we don't just access all of our own past life, all of our experiences. We actually have access to all of other people's past life and future, all of their um, experiences of all the souls within this universe. When we have access to all of that, then imagine our sense of reality would be so much more profound and in what we know of as being real would be very different than when we are just confined to our own access to um, past, present, future. So those are kind of the three levels of reality. However, I also want to bring it back to human level is how do we as a human being in the here and now be able to access things that are beyond the 3D? Um, uh, actually, before I go on to that, I just want to ask for any uh, comments, questions so far. You are welcome to ask questions if you have any. If you don't have any questions yet, then I'm gonna no go. No questions. <laughs> no questions. <laughs> okay. Thank you for for letting me know. Um, okay. So now I want to go to um, some very simple things that we can start to train ourselves because um, even when we are trying to develop our extra senses within this body, we, we can experience those. We can have those extra senses. We, um, we can do that. We don't have to be um, a you know, sixth dimension level being with no physical body in order to access those. Just being in this body, we can start to access those above 3D experiences. And it it can start to be something that is so simple as um, doing our own work. Um, the the um, the past two months, I've been going through each of our chakras, and which is like through the Kundalini. Each of our chakras is giving us information about certain levels or, or certain things. For example, root chakra is really about our connection to Earth, which is the playground that we are on right now. And if there is any misunderstanding or any blockage with the, the root chakra, then we really don't have the information um, from earth in a very clear way. So when we clear the, the root chakra blo blockages, then we can get to the sacral and all, all the other chakras. So 
doing the work consistently to clear our own energy, our own kundalini, which is, um, the kundalini is more dictate how we experience our earth, the, the, all the experience that we have on earth, earth is. It also give us information uh, or connect us to not just ourselves, but it actually connects us to the human collective as well through the uh, Kundalini. And um, so Kundalini is about experience, our experience on earth. And when we keep our kundalini clear, then um, we actually would be able to have more access to what's going on in the um, around the, the what we think of as our world. We would actually be more able to tap into what the human collective. Um, how the human collective respond to uh, what's going on in the earth right now. So, and then the other things that we can do is um, once we so clear our Kundalini and the other thing is just set a, make a, um, a choice, make a decision to always be honest with yourself and to also um, be open to hearing other people's point of view as well because the more we can let go of thinking, okay, this person is criticizing me, I, so feeling attack. When I when we do that, we actually um, contract ourselves. We actually are, um, are creating blockage within ourselves. When we can become more open to considering other people's point of view, not saying that Every time we listen to someone else's point of view, we, we're going to agree with them. Um, no, but just be open to listen to somebody else's point of view without needing or thinking that we, we are committed to um, considering their point of view over our own. So being able to let go of what we think of as true for the moment or how long, however long it takes to listen to another one's point of view. And their point of view can be just as valid as yours. Can and and that's the way it's supposed to be. Is that we have other people there because we want to have uh, that different input. And the more input that we are able to hold in our mind without collapsing and giving into anyone in particular and be able to look at all those different points of view and really, and in the moment, be able to come up with what is what it is that is most congruent for yourself so that really is um, the ability to be who we are and also be flexible as well and um, so coming back to how do we train ourselves to be more able to, what's the word I'm looking for? 
is to be able to feel truth in your body. Because just because somebody else um, say something doesn't mean that it's true. Or doesn't mean that they have um, your best interests in mind in sharing their information with you. So that's why I want to start to um, actually, let me uh, get to this. Okay, so there are a few, um, sentences. there are a few things that I want you to consider in this moment. Okay, so, So I'm going to um, say a few things to you, and I want you to just feel, feel this, okay? I want you to feel the difference between sentence one and sentence two, okay? So sent the first sentence is, this is my problem. So just say the sentence to yourself and feel how your body feels. This is my problem. And that's the first sentence. And then, so get a reading, kind of check in with your body, how your body feels. Okay. And now I want you to, now the second sentence is, this is a problem. So repeat this second sentence. This is a problem to yourself and see how it feels like in your body. Okay. Now, um, I just want to check. Do you, do you, any of you feel there's a difference in your body between those two sentences? Not so much in the body as in the mind. Yeah, because when you say this is my problem, you sort of feel like you created it. When you say this is a problem, it's just a problem. Like, okay, good. And you notice not that personal. Yeah, it's not personal. Yeah. So good. You notice that there is a difference so that's that's all i'm looking for as you notice there is a difference in how you how you respond to those two sentences okay so i have another two sentences for you all to um consider as well so so um first okay I should, Third sentence, okay? Third, the third sentence is, this is my body. And I want you to repeat this to yourself and feel what it feels like. This is my body. It's sentence number three. Okay. So sentence number four, this is the body. This is the body. Okay, so check in again and notice any difference between like how your body feels. Do you do you notice a difference between those two? Nobody else is saying so. Again, it's. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I just saying. Uh, I just feel like there's one that's. Uh, this is 
my body, there's ownership there to where the other one, there is a difference. This is the body. So there wasn't such a ownership there. Okay. Cool. Good. So you notice a difference. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I noticed a difference when it was <clears throat> for the first one, I had the contraction in the abdomen area. <laughs> and then um, for the this is my body, I felt happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. So, sentence number five, I am winning. So, when you say it to yourself, you don't say I am winning because <laughs> you're not all winning. So, it's you, I am whatever your own name is. So, say that to yourself. I am your name. So. And just feel what that feels like. And then sentence number six, I have a name called Winnie, or I have a name called whatever your name is. Notice any difference between those two sentences? Yeah, when you say I am so and so, it uh, kind of says like you have a identity with that. But I would normally say my name is so and so. I wouldn't say I am so and so. Because then what is what is that okay. person? Yeah. So then in that case, then my name is whatever your name is. Say that to yourself. Yeah. My name is, yeah. Yeah, but that is just a name that it's not identifying with me like uh, so much. It's still like slightly impersonal, like, like. Like it could be anybody else's name too. Okay. So my name is whatever the name is, your name is. So fill in the blank. Yeah. My name is Roxana. And then the other part of the sentence was the other one. Um, okay, feel what that feels like. And then the second one is, I have a name called whatever the your name is. There seems to be more distance when you say that. I have the name so and so. Okay, cool, good. So you notice that difference, okay? Okay, great. I actually. I will ask you to do this again after we've done some meditation. See if you feel any difference between those sentences. Okay. And um, part of the, the reason why I have these different sentences is um, just to that you all know that words are very powerful. 
The words you use is very powerful. And um, as, as you mentioned, when you when you say my name is my name is Winnie, you will feel a certain thing. You have a certain feeling in your body when you know that that is true. When you say something to yourself and you congruently feel that that is true, then you feel there is a certain feeling. Whereas if you say something that is um, unknown, or when you hear something that you don't know whether it's true or not, your body actually can still feel what is true or not true. Did I make myself, um, did I explain this correctly? Is that when you say something that is true, um, your body has a certain feeling. When you say something that is not true, your body has a different feeling. And this is true for not just the person that is seeing it. It's also true for the person who is hearing it as well. If I say something that is false to you, and I know that it is, I'm saying I'm lying to you, then you can pick it up. And when you start to train your own body to be able to pick up what the truth feels like in your body, then you will be able to um, actually feel the difference when someone else is lying to you. It's you, your body will feel differently. And so one of the, the first level of um, training yourself to be able to access more of the, the above 3D level of truth is really to start to train your body to know the difference between what feels true to you and what does not feel true to you. And um, train your body to start to have that ability to tell the truth. So that when you hear the truth from someone else, you, you actually will be able to feel that, okay, that, that feels true. And then when someone is lying to you, also would be able to feel. You may not feel that, oh, that is a lie. But you would feel, hmm. There's something off about it. And when you start to feel that there is something off about it, then you can start to ask questions to yourself. Is, hmm, how come it's off? And you would be able to um, get more information from, from that. So that's one of the ways to do that. Um, so far, so good. Any questions, comments up until now? Okay, if not, then let's press on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did you want to say something? No. No, I'm just... Copy on with the end game, but I don't want to jump to something. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 <clears throat> um, okay. So let's 
Let's go on to talk about, so Kundalini is about our experience in, on earth, our connection to earth, our earth experience. So what is the central meridian? Central meridian is really connection, our connection to all, to everything, not just to, um, not just to, to earth, because there is earth information within the central meridian as well. But then it's also about um, the, the, the whole universe. And especially and we are connected to ourselves, but not our, the selves that we are, we think we are when we are on earth is actually there are many levels of our um, experience. We have different experiences, different instances of our soul in different um, playgrounds. Earth is just one of them. We may have only one other, we, only, we may have only one um, addition of ourselves playing on earth or we actually may have two or three of them that's on earth and then others that are on mars for example or others that are on jupiter like or all around the the, the universe so there are different versions of ourselves that's how we learn is we go to different playgrounds we create our own experiences in those different playgrounds and different playgrounds who have different capabilities for us. And um, so when we strengthen the central meridian, it actually allows us to get our experiences from those other playgrounds as well, past, present and future. We get all, a lot of information from the central meridian. And I actually want to show you something. Okay, so let me just, okay, so this is what we did. So, so when we merge our Kundalini and the central meridian, C and the central meridian together, um, because we are still playing on Earth, so most of the time, our Kundalini would be strong, stronger. So when we merge the Kundalini and the Central Meridian, the sixth chakra would be above the energy center, which is from the central meridian. So the um, sixth chakra is actually, the information is sitting above the energy center, number six, meaning that we would actually get information more from the sixth chakra rather than from the, the kind of the, compl the, the comparable, energy center number six that's from central meridian and when we get to the um, fifth chakra which is our uh, uh, no not our, uh, that's our throat chakra when we get to our throat chakra we actually the um, fifth chakra is below the comparable energy center that is from the central meridian. And in terms of the fourth chakra, which is the heart chakra, the heart chakra, it will be, we actually have, it's, it's actually true that we have two heart chakra. We have the upper heart chakra and the lower heart chakra. Why? Because the upper heart chakra is really the, the chakra that is from the kundalini whereas the lower heart is from central meridian 
And so most of the time we would get information from our chakra, from the Kundalini side, rather than from the central meridian side. And the same is for the um, solar plexus as well, which is the third chakra. So this is how when we get, when we merge those two together, the Kundalini and the central meridian, when we do that, we actually, uh, a lot of the times, the, we are getting more of the information that is from our Kundalini rather than from the central meridian. So because the Kundalini is more about our experience on Earth. So um, the Earth experience is more vivid, is emotional. Emotions uh, is, I, I wouldn't say that the other um, central meridian does not have emotion at all. But the Kundalini, the emotions from the Kundalini would be much more vivid and at times more overwhelming as well. So part of the things that we can do in order to access a truth that is beyond the 3D and our five senses is to strengthen our central meridian. So when we strengthen our central meridian and, and also we can, when we strengthen our central meridian, the, um, the energy centers would be able to broadcast information that is from, um, that is beyond 3D to us. And also, of course, we can also specify because a lot of times when we do meditation, we, I did mention that, you know, for the, let's, for example, CK6, so six chakra and the energy center from the central meridian number six is to have the EC6 on top. So when we place the central meridian chakra on top, it actually means that that, the energy that is from that um, center is actually more broadcasting um, more vibrantly, vigorously above the other one. When, when those two energy centers, uh, those two energy pathways are together. So that's why it's, it's, it's really another way of saying that. If we want to access more of um, our senses, our extra senses beyond 3D, is really to strengthen our central meridian. So uh, I think that's all I want to talk about today. Um, I just want to sum up is... When we are in 3D, when we're in this body, we it's kind of like we are locked into a certain timeline. If you want to shift to a different timeline, what you can do is to actually start to strengthen in information that is coming in that's above 3D, that is strengthen the central meridian so that you can start to pull in information about other parts of yourself. Because we, we think of, okay, my name is Winnie, this is my body, so everything is me, me, me. All of those is actually trying to shrink you down to 3D. Whereas if you start to think of, okay, I have a body. This is a body um, that I'm using, but this is not me. This, this is my body, but this is not me. I, have, I am actually more than this body. When you start to expand yourself and to open up to more possibilities, 
to consider because you have you even though you are in this incarnation, but you actually have lived other lives. You have other identities that you can draw from. So when you are only focused on this one time and space, you lock yourself into a timeline. When you can start to zoom out and to um, start to get information about all of your other selves in, you actually would be able to open yourself up to look at, okay, so I have a body, but I'm not this body. I have an illness. I have a problem, but I am not this illness or I'm not this problem. Then you can zoom out and look for, okay, a, a person with this, this problem. Um, if they have more possibilities to play with how would they be able to come up with the best solution so that you can, when you zoom out, look at all the other possibilities that's available, then you can start to come back to this time and space and be able to think of and find the best route for you to solve an issue or solve or heal your body. So this is what is available when you are able to shift the levels of your understanding of what truth is, shift the, your level of your consciousness. And you can shift those, shift uh, move in and then also to zoom out and be able to look at more possibilities. That is what all this is about, uh, what I'm trying to, to say. So um, I can also actually <clears throat> give an example. Um, I think it was in... I forgot whether it's end game or which <clears throat> which um Marvel movie it was in. There is this character called Doctor Strange. He was able to look um be able to look at all the different possibilities because um in his current reality something bad was happening and he wants to actually find the best way to transcend the that the that up or that um <clears throat> that bad thing to happen so um so when he go and look at i forgot how many thousands how many or tens of thousands of different possibilities he actually was able to find one possibility where earth does not um where the earth does not you know, explode or, or or the worst things happen. So he was able to find that one reality. And he was able to, when he come back, to, after he looked at all those different things, when he come back, he was able to pick the reality where earth and everyone else on earth was able to survive all of that. So that's really what we are trying to do now. Um, what I'm trying to, to mention that we can do that. We don't have to be Dr. Strange. It's, it's not something that is fictional. We can actually do that in our own lives is when we can be flexible enough to zoom out and consider all of the other possibilities because we are not just this body we are not just this personality this name the the person who is winnie that exists in this time space uh, actually existed in so many other different time space as well 
and all of the information from those time space is available to this Winnie. So if, when I am able to zoom out and be able to get information, extra information from all those other versions of myself, I would be able to find the best solution for whatever it is that I, I want to experience in this reality. And that's all I want to say for this evening. So questions, comments? Just a, just a comment. Yeah, that was beautiful, Winnie. I've uh, never realised any of that stuff, so it's all uh, uh, it's all new to me, and it's uh, and I can see what you're saying, and that's that's I can feel what you're saying, so that's really good. Yeah, and I I, I picked up all the differences that you mentioned before, and uh, yeah, just great. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, I think that's, I also want to mention, that's why there are so much fear. And um, but that's why there's so many um, fear monger that's going on. Because when we are in fear, that actually messes our Kundalini up. And that actually is how that's how the people people that wants to control our reality that's one of their tried and true um, strategy is to create a fearful environment so when we when we buy into the fear then we actually are locked into a certain, um, we are actually locked into a certain timeline when we can start to let go of the fear. We actually would have access to so many more possibilities. We don't have to play their game anymore. So, easier it's 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 simple but it's not easy so um process fear wherever it is that you feel fear process it really let go of that because when when you clear your own fear bodies you clear your own um does not have to be fear. It has. It can be any kind of resistance. When you clear those, you actually allow yourself the ability to access a lot more possibilities. That's why I talked about. You know, when you get to neutral, you can pick your own. Like, you can you can create your own um, story. What I thought you were leading up to is that when you say different st sentences, <laughs> you feel different emotions too. So that is where you don't know what is truth and what is not. So what you're saying is like, you got to feel the truth, whether it's true for you, but it not may not be the same for the other person. Yep, very true. Yep. And what we, we need. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me it's just. It's okay. First. Yeah. Um, and what we feel is true depends on which level we are on. Because when you, when you really believe that you are this body and living this life, having this personality, when you really believe that, you know, that is, then um, 
of course, your what is important to you will be very different when you know that there are so much more other possibilities. So yeah, that's that's all I want to mention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, um, so the process to see a problem or a, an issue from from a, a extended perspective is uh, align your kundalini uh, and with the meridians and then uh, uh, try to to see from that. Uh, being neutral and try to see from that uh, perspective. Okay. Um. I didn't. Sorry. Uh, say that again. Ask that question again. Um. Um, maybe in the meditation you you will do the process and then I, I will understand better <laughs> okay. how to I, I don't know what's coming in the meditation but yeah uh, it was just a question that when you want to see how you say the Dr. Strange did yeah mm -hmm. uh, he traveled to see in other dimension to see how to resolve an issue, yeah? So I was just asking about the process. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are different ways of, of accessing that. Um, for example, the the way I was okay. So let me let me talk about how Richard Bartlett um does <laughs> does healing. Is he he has a few mentors. He he has a few mentors. Um, uh, Reese, Doctor Reese, Doctor Reese is one of his mentor. So when he, when he, you know, see a, a client that he, he has no idea how to help, he would really yeah. all of a sudden um, let go of thinking of himself as um, Richard Bartlett. And he would all, and just allow um, his mentor, Dr. Reese, because... Because uh, Dr. Reese is, is or was, because Dr. Reese passed over already, was his mentor. So he has a lot. Dr. Reese has um, so many other different ways of looking at a, a client, very different from how he does it, how Richard does it. So when Richard does not know how to approach a uh, a, a case, he actually would assume the persona of Dr. Reese so that he can all of a sudden mm -hmm. be able to look at something from a different angle and be able to find an opening to start to work with the client. So that's one way. Um, mm -hmm. so, you, so that's why I mentioned is when you get to be more flexible, you let go of your own perception of who you are and be able to open up to allow other identities to um, and other points of view to come in as well then you'll be able to see and approach an issue whether it is um, health with your health or with something else that is completely different approach than how you would um, see that situation and be able to come up with a way to solve that issue. Does that help? 
Ya. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. It's it's good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your questions. Any other questions or comments? Okay. In that case, let's do a meditation. Um, so, remember I showed you a little, a little, maybe about 10 minutes ago, about that when we merge the, the central meridian and the kundalini, that usually the kundalini um, energies are above the central meridian. So in this in this meditation that I'll be doing shortly with you with all of you is we're going to merge the uh, the kundalini and the central meridian. At this time, we want to um, specifically have the energy centers be more prominent than the the kundalini and um just just to see how that feels to allow in a different point of view energetically from ourselves so i'm 